This is a human presence detection radar and its manufacturer is claiming that it can detect movement even behind obstacles. So can it really do that? In this tutorial, we will be testing the limits of this module and interface it using ESP32S3 and show the radar data on a round display which has a NASA looking user interface implemented using LVGA library. We have got a radar to test today so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. They also have open source community so there are many projects to have a look at. Find the link in the description. Okay, so here's the human presence radar that I have. It's from Hylink, HLK LD1125H. So the manufacturing company claims that this radar is able to penetrate objects so in this tutorial uh, we'll be testing this uh, it's actually interfaced over UART so I'm going to use connect board in order to read data from it uh, this board I've designed it before in, uh, in my previous tutorials this board has ESP32S3 and I've also designed this uh, 3D printed case I will insert the radar inside it like this and now we are good to go Okay, so now let's do the connections and see our setup. Alright, so here's the uh, hardware that we are going to use in this tutorial. Here I have a connect board uh, that I have designed before uh, and it has the ESP32S3 that's uh, deriving this round display over SPI. And here, of course, I'm running LVGA library in order to get this uh, nicely looking interface. We will have a look at this uh, user interface design in more details uh, during this tutorial. In addition to that, here I have this human presence radar uh, and it's being interfaced over UART. It's connected to the UART of the ESP32S3 in order to uh, read the uh, distance and uh, human detection uh, data. So actually currently the radar is sending uh, continuous data uh, over UART and the ESP32 is printing this data uh, on this display. We will be having a test in order to see the limits of this uh, sensor. The manufacturer company is claiming that this radar is able to detect objects uh, behind obstacles so we are going to do that. So as you can see this radar operates at uh, 24 gigahertz. So currently I don't have any functionality for this rotary encoder uh, but in the upcoming tutorial I will be integrating this uh, to the current firmware so I can navigate between the radar interface and the uh, smartwatch that I've designed before. So stay tuned for that part. I'm sure that it's going to be quite beneficial for you. All right, so here's the setup that I'm going to use for a distance measuring test, a human behind obstacle test. So in this test, I will be having an open area for testing uh, around six meters, starting from this point uh, to that wall. So as you can see here, I've placed the uh, radar inside this case, facing that side, so it can detect any motion in the open area. And for the object detection uh, and measuring test, uh, I will be using this uh, filament spool, and I will roll it uh, in the open area and see the distance measuring uh, on the round display. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so in this experiment, I'm testing the radar against a door made out of wood and it was actually able to detect me as if there was no obstacle between. So I was moving in the open room and it was able to detect me all the time. And of course, measuring the distance between. Okay, so this time I will be testing the radar against a different obstacle material. So here I have a door made out of metal. So let's see if it can detect me behind that door.
Uh, during this test, I was moving away uh, behind the door until it stops detecting me. So here the test was by putting the radar module against a wall to see if it can detect me behind that wall. Ha however, it was not able to detect any motion even when I was close to the wall on the other side. Okay, so now let's move on to the firmware part. Of course, first of all, we need to uh, have a look at the uh, packets that are received over UART from the human detection radar and this is the document of the module that we are using so these are the pins that we have uh, it's supplied by 5 volt ground uh, UART uh, reception and transmission uh, in this tutorial actually I'm not using the reception pin because uh, it can receive uh, commands that can set the radar to output data when it starts detection motion at a specific distance but uh, in this tutorial we are skipping that part so here we can see the packets that are being uh, transmitted from the module. We can zoom in. So in the received packets, there are two types of motion. Here we can see the occurrence packet and the movement packet. So the movement packet will be received when the radar will detect an active motion. Uh, and the occurrence packet will be received uh, when a very slight movement is detected. And after the movement type is received, we can see the distance uh, and then we can see the value. So the radar is actually able to detect movements uh, up to 9 meters and it can detect human presence within 4 meters range, which is quite acceptable. Alright, so this is the firmware running on the ESP32 S3. It's actually the same one I've used for a smartwatch tutorial. But here I have disabled the tasks that are related to MQTT and Wi-Fi. And in the LVGL part, uh, I've changed the screen in order to print the uh, distance uh, on the round display and added uh, UART configuration because I need to communicate with the uh, human detection radar so here in the UART reception task I'm actually uh, parsing the data received from the uh, radar and obtaining both the detected distance and the movement type so let's go inside this function and see how it's implemented so here in the substring function I'm actually moving this pointer to point at everything after this equal sign so if we have a look at the packets that are being received so this will allow me to point to the value uh, of the distance detected and after that I'm extracting the distance value and transforming it from a string to float type and then I'm converting the value from meters to centimeters and this part is responsible for determining the movement type whether it is uh, active movement or static movement and then this function will return the detected distance value in form of integer so I don't deal with floats uh, in the main code so in case of a real detected distance I'm sending this data to the system queue which on the other hand will be used by the uh, LVGL uh, task so uh, here I'm reading the value from the queue and then sending them to the user interface handling function so so if we open this function uh, i'm converting the detected uh, distance uh, two meters and centimeters uh, separately so i can form uh, such a string so i can show it this way uh, on the round display uh, and depending on the detected movement type i'm either showing movement or a static uh, string uh, on the upper side of the display and of course uh, these formed strings are sent to the LVGL library so they are printed uh, and depending on the value received from the detected distance I'm changing the uh, arc uh, showing on the screen in order to show how far the detected object is this brings me to the end of this video I will be sharing all the materials related to this tutorial on my github repository so you can play with it or even develop it if you have learned something new from me please like this video Share it among your friends and tell them about Visual Electronics. See you in the upcoming tutorials and bye bye.